Hello, and thank you for tuning in to the inaugural episode of the Talk Your Leg Off podcast. Your host is Jake Sinisek, that's him. And my co-host is the lovely Jules Sinisek. In this episode, we hope to give a little bit of an introduction to ourselves, we'll talk a little bit of wrestling, and we'll discuss the new movie, A Star is Born. That's right. Um, So to get started, a little bit about Jake and I. Um, We are a married couple, which... We have the same last name, so I hope that was obvious. We're Um, not a brother-sister duo. We're not a brother-sister duo, no. Um, A little bit about me. Um, I have mild interest in professional wrestling, um, but it's only since I met Jake that I had a large exposure to wrestling. So that's an interest of mine, but um, I'm getting more interested in it every day. I think Jake's going to introduce me to some old things and some new things. Not only am I going to help introduce you, hopefully our audience will as well. Maybe we'll throw up some polls to see different things that we could discuss on a a weekly basis, things to go check out. Uh, We'll start watching the weekly products a little bit more. We'll just start covering things a bit, and that way Jules can get a little bit more enlightened about the world of professional wrestling. But for those of you who aren't into professional wrestling, be assured that we will still occasionally... Well, and every time we will be talking about something besides wrestling. Um, Today we're going to be talking about A Star is Born, which is a movie we just saw. Um, But also, I love Bravo shows, and I make Jake watch lots of them with me. So I'm sure that we'll end up talking about Below Deck and Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and things like that. Other movies or TV shows we've been watching lately. Other things that we will talk about, um, we've got plethora of pets and if you hear a clicking and clacking in the background that is them walking around on with a needing a nail trim <laughs> that's right walking around on our wood laminate floors being extra annoying because they know we're recording i'm sure i'm sure so hopefully that's not too annoying and we will in the future probably try to record somewhere where we can't hear our little furry friends running around we can only hope yeah uh, other things that we'll talk about um interest of mine are music I love going to concerts, things of that nature. Um, we'll talk about movies, TV. We'll talk about maybe comic books, comic book movies. A lot of nerdy stuff, really, I would I would hope. Yeah, probably even some ge- more general stuff just about relationships and marriage and family and things like that. That's right. I mean, we will definitely do our best to hey, answer any questions. Hey, it's our podcast. We can talk about whatever we want. We can. That's the beauty of it. Totally. Um, let's see. Um... One thing that I think Jake and I have in common that I I hope will translate a lot as you hear us discuss our lives and stuff is that we're both people who are really people who are really committed to constantly trying to improve ourselves, Um, not only for ourselves, but for each other. We're constantly trying to grow and improve, um, whether it's at work, whether it's at home, whether it's cooking, whether it's going to the gym more, trying to be healthier, Um, no matter what it is, we're both really committed to trying to improve ourselves not only for each other but for our marriage that's right things that we're hoping to do are maybe start uh, going to the gym better starting to eat a little bit better and also we're gonna both be starting ddpy it's something i've talked about on twitter several times and i just keep needing that extra push to go and i'm hoping that with this podcast, we can start giving ourselves a little bit of accountability. Yeah, totally. And I mean, the Twitter community has been so great to us on so many, I mean, so many different ways. But I think that it would be a great way for us to stay motivated. At the very least, that so we can be held accountable. So if you see that we haven't posted anything for a while about having gone to the gym or, you know, doing the DDPY, definitely call us out. Give us give us some crap. I mean, a little bit. Don't be, like, mean about it. Well, please. <laughs> I mean... I will cry. <laughs> I might even cry in the air. Let's see. One thing that people people who know us from Twitter or have met us at different uh, wrestling events or whatever, one thing you'll know about Jake is that he is a baloney amputee. So he has a prosthetic leg. Usually makes him n- quite noticeable if you, if you know him. Um, we'll quickly talk about that. We'll talk about it later. And, and it, I mean, it's something that we deal with in our everyday life. So I'm sure it'll come up multiple times. Um, but in December of 2017, Jake got a staph infection and ended up having to have his leg amputated below the knee on the right leg. Just in case people want a little bit more of the background before we get into some of it a bit more in the show, Jules has a website where it is Jules Sinisac. It's or, juliesinisac.com. Yeah, it's it's linked in the Twitter, so you would be able to go and just sort of get a bit of a background, a bit more of things that have happened, see some pictures, some fun videos. like, like A lot of the things that go into the journey of being an amputee especially a new amputee 
Right, and and like she said, we'll we'll cover it. We don't we don't want to overwhelm our audience right away with you know an hour and a half or longer just talking about me being an amputee and the process and all that because yeah. even I don't want to hear about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that was another thing that we kind of felt like it was a a good platform for us to be able to talk about because we have been through something really unique um, over the past almost year now. And that, that really has inspired us and has made our outlook on life really change and and want to be able to make a better community of people online even and something to show people that like you never know how strong you are until you're faced with something like this. Speaking to that, one thing you said like with us having been changed, I mean beforehand I was even more of an introvert and throughout this whole process it's actually made me start to care about others more and want to talk with people. It's been... It's been a phenomenal journey, just in the fact that I feel it has really changed me and my outlook on things. I've become more of an optimist overall. There's there's downtimes. I'm not going to say there's not, but I mean... And we all struggle with that. I mean, that one thing that I feel like I have learned more than anything um, over the past few months is that when I am open and honest about my anxiety or, you know, at different times when I have dealt with depression, and I know Jake has, you have too, um, we, the more we've been vocal about it, the more we've realized how many, how so, we are so not alone. That, like, anxiety and depression is so common, and it's, and it's very relatable, but most people don't want to talk about it. No, they really don't, and that's the thing is, we want this to be, this is a safe place for people. I mean, if people... <laughs> People from our Twitter want to DM and say, like, you know, that they're having issues and just need somebody to talk to. Definitely talk to us. I mean, yeah. we go through this stuff and we know that others are too. So it's, like I said, this is a, a safe haven, if you will. Yeah. What are, um, What do you think some of our hopes are for the show, Jake? I mean, this was your idea. This this was my idea. Which <laughs> you I kinda, may be regretting that. I know. It's one of those things. Careful what you wish for. but. Yeah. No, I would. I'd love to maybe get to do some interviews with people throughout the wrestling community, whether it's fans, wrestlers, personalities of such. Um, definitely hoping to have Papa Buck on the air sometime. Oh, for sure. Uh, you know Ma- you're getting that call, Matthew. Oh, that's right. Matthew Massey is a great friend of the show. Even though this is the first episode, we have <laughs> hit quite the friendship with him, and hopefully, we can even talk him into doing a theme for us at some yeah. point. But uh, yeah, so we would really love to have some guests. We would love to maybe have. People come on to talk about the shows um, either that they've gone to, things such as All In or StarCast or the upcoming NWA 70th anniversary shows, things of that nature. Or even like SmackDown and Raw. I mean, we're not the hugest WWE watchers, but we still go. I mean, we're going to... What are we going to on Tuesday? We're going to SmackDown. We're going to SmackDown. That shows you how interested I am. But, um, but okay, I mean, and we've been to a Raw in the past, and, you know, it's not our mo- the proj- the product that we're most currently involved with, but, but we'll still talk about it. I guess we should maybe say, like, more so I'm a fan of New Japan Pro Wrestling. We're big fans of watching Being the Elite. Uh, we make that uh, appointment television. Well, maybe we watch it on the television. So it's, <laughs> for all sakes of argument, it's... Uh, it's appointment television for us. Yeah. Um, another thing that I'm at least hoping for for us to get through this show is um, to connect with other people and learn more about lots of different things. Um, there's also, I feel like, a lot to be gained as far as learning about yourself and our growing at, as individuals, but also growing in our marriage. So hopefully, not to set the bar too high, but um, that's my hope. <laughs> that's the thing. I mean, maybe we can get relationship advice from other people who listen, and maybe we can give some. Yeah, totally. I mean, we're not therapists, but, you know. (laughs) But we can play one on Twitter. Oh, that's right. That's funny. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Let's talk a little bit about wrestling, honey. All right, let's let's do it. Who are some of your current favorites? Some of my current favorites. Actually, I just did a a little thing on Twitter where I answered somebody asking this. All right, I guess I'm just going to rattle off some wrestlers. Kenny Omega is definitely up there. Uh, Cody Rhodes and the Young Bucks, I can't. They're at the top, but I can't can't pick one. I mean. I can't pick a favorite young buck either. I feel like that's when, you know, you ask somebody, like, who's your favorite child? It, to me, it's like, I, I can't pick. I <laughs> you mean, love them both equally. I do. And nobody can convince me otherwise. Um, Kevin Owens, Adam Cole, uh, those are a couple of my favorites. Any of the ladies? Any of the ladies. I like Becky, Becky Lynch. Okay. Um, I like Nia Jax. I don't feel like they use her well enough, but I, I'm, I'm a fan. Um, I like Brandi Rhodes. She doesn't, she doesn't get a wrestle enough. I really like the improvement that she's been showing, and 
I just I love her as a personality as well. We are big fans of her cooking show. A shot of brandy. That's right. Yeah, check that out on YouTube. It's so good. That's right. We have ever we have yet to make anything, but she's just funny when she when she's making her cocktails and whatever she's making. That's right, and we love all the cameos by their dogs. Yes, for sure. <laughs> um, I know for me, one person that you didn't mention that I'm a pretty big fan of. Go on. Hangman Adam Page. Well, yeah, I mean, you go on about him all the time every time we've seen him. Well, I mean, it's just because he's so good and pretty handsome. I was going to say, <laughs> I wasn't going to let you off the hook without mentioning how handsome he is. No, and he just he inspired me because I feel like knowing that he was a teacher. He was just a teacher being a road warrior on the weekend. Quite a story there. Yeah. Another one that I really enjoy is uh, Joey Janela. He came onto my radar a bit more with uh, All In, speaking of Hangman Page, but... Uh, yeah, the match that they just had at All In was just fantastic. And I've become a fan of Joey Janela and the personality he has and just all the different vignettes he does. And it's unfortunate that he's going to be out for yeah. probably about a year with a, a knee injury. Yeah, that sucks. There was a girl, oh, oh, female wrestler that we saw at All In. I'm not going to be able to remember her name. If you give me Jordan. a little, uh Jordan Grace. Yes, Jordan Grace. I was impressed with her. She's the one that wrestled that really big guy. Yes, Brian Cage. Yeah. I don't remember. They wrestled at All In, right? Yes, they were in the uh, Over the Budget Battle Royal. Yeah, she was impressive to me. As you can tell, Jules is very, very knowledgeable of wrestler names. I am? No. That was was me being sarcastic. (laughs) That one guy. You know that one guy. Like I said, one goal is to hopefully get Jules to be a little bit more knowledgeable about wrestling. She doesn't know much about the history except for little bits that I tell her when I typically listen to Conrad Thompson (laughs) podcasts. Um, and even then, I know it's very much one ear and out the other. But I'm hoping that maybe with this, we can start making it where I can get a little bit more TV time with watching wrestling. And Oh, that's what this is about? <laughs> I mean, I'd be a liar if I said it wasn't part of the goal. <laughs> yeah. Normally, it's Saturday or Sunday mornings, maybe both. I'm up early at 8 a.m. so I can be watching wrestling for a few hours before she wakes up. Yeah. Um, let's see, anybody else? I mean, I really liked... I mean, I really like Kenny Omega. I mean, obviously. Who well, doesn't? Obviously. Yeah. Jim Cornette doesn't. Oh, see? No. You're going to drop a name like that, and I'm going to be like, uh-huh, because I have no idea who you're talking about. He he is a very angry man on Twitter, who, oh. an old school manager, and yeah, we, we won't really go on about that. Well, so what, so what are these plans you have to get me more uh, interested or invested Well, I mean, fortunately, we have the WWE Network and New Japan Pro Wrestling World, so we can just go back through back catalogs. We can watch some classic matches that some of them maybe you have already seen, but you just wouldn't really know much about the context of it. So I would hope that maybe we could talk a little bit about the significance of the match or things that have built up to it, um, maybe fall out from it, and then we could be able to watch the match, and then we can give our thoughts about it. Now, generally, my my thoughts are not usually... Um, as profound as yours, mine usually involve what what someone looks like, what their outfit is. How majestic AJ Styles' hair How is. How majestic AJ Styles' hair is. That's another one that I am a very big fan of. Oh, man. Totally. So if you're looking for like quality commentary, this is probably not the podcast for you. Probably not. Maybe one day I'll do a side podcast where we can get a <gasps> little bit more into that. Me. I, I mean, if we wanted to get a little bit more in depth about things, well, that's I mean... True. You never know. Or a special guest co-host with someone who knows what they're talking about. That's that's valid. I mean, because <laughs> that's the thing. I mean, I just like to keep my options open. Yeah. Mm. Well, I do want to say, as as someone who's not necessarily the most knowledgeable or at times interested, um, the one thing I really do like about professional wrestling is that it's really an arena for people who have these amazing physical talents, and they're able to express them in this like really fun, creative, entertaining way. That I never, I never really got that about wrestling until obviously I met and married Jake and realized that professional wrestling was not something that was going to go away in our life. But I think it's it's a fascinating way of doing some amazing storytelling, and that's what I really like uh, that I didn't have really any clue about beforehand. So I mean, I think the ability to to take something that like a physical talent and turn it into an entertaining, you know, an entertainment factor i think that's really fascinating that's right it's uh it's a lot more than just being an athlete but it's also more than being an actor it's right you have to do both you have to do it live so i mean that's there's a lot to it and i know i sure as hell couldn't do it no way man it's it's really cool yeah so 
Jules had kind of alluded to it earlier, I believe, that uh, we will be going to SmackDown here, actually this upcoming Tuesday. Um, for those who are not in the know, we are based out of Indianapolis, Indiana, here in the, the Midwest. The heart of the Midwest. That's right. We are in the heartland. Uh, my cousin Joel went and got tickets for us and his fiance and him, so we'll be going to SmackDown. We have not watched SmackDown in... Quite a while. I think the last episode I had seen was the SmackDown uh, after WrestleMania. So so a while. Yeah, only like seven months or <laughs> six months. I don't know. Yeah, and but it'll be it'll be um, a fun experience too because especially since since I'm like getting more into wrestling, we're gonna be going with Jake mentioned his cousin and his fiance who, to my knowledge, ha- have no interest in wrestling. That's the thing, Jules. She might not be great with names, but at least she knows some people. I would be surprised if they know anybody more than Hulk Hogan, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and The Rock, maybe. That's probably pushing it for their <laughs> knowledge of anything pro wrestling. Yeah. But, uh... But, it's, I mean, it's still a fun time. I mean, like, you can't go to one of these shows and see the... Just the physical talent that these people have. I mean, I know people give crap because it's predetermined endings, but that makes it even better because it there's no... You don't have to win to have a... You don't have to win the match to be and have an impressive showing. That's right. Anyway, so yeah, we went and watched SmackDown this week from this week uh, in preparation, and it was not good. I'm yeah. I'll be honest. The matches weren't bad overall. Oh, there were, were there matches or were there just segments? <laughs> there were a lot of segments. Because um, I I think how many matches were there? I believe it was four or five. That's it. That's it. Yeah. In two hours, there was four or five matches, and one of them didn't even have an ending. Yeah, it was... I didn't even know that What's-Her-Name is the manager. Paige. Paige. She's the general manager. Great with names here, again. Right, right. I didn't even know she was the general manager. We shouldn't make it known that Jules only knew of Paige from the show Total Divas. Total Divas. Which is actually what I kind of used initially as a little bit of a springboard to get Jules I know, he was kind of sneaky. He was like, this is a reality show. You like Housewives? This is kind of like Housewives. Right. And I got sucked in. That's right. Those, those dastardly total divas just yeah. bringing the end of the sport. Yeah. So, anyways, yeah, we, uh, man, I gotta quit using the word anyways. Well, I'm, it's, it's the first one. I know I shouldn't draw attention to it, but I'm, I'm annoying myself here. So <laughs> I, I hope you all out there are not getting terribly annoyed with it. No. But uh, yeah, the show was a bit of a dud. I hope think, ours will well, be better. Well, I'm gonna jump in. You, you said at least you think that maybe it's because so much of this was building up to that. Australia show? Yeah, the Super Showdown, or yeah. I, so maybe maybe we can give them a little bit of a pass. We'll see. We'll yeah. we'll see after when we record next week and talk about how the SmackDown we went to goes. Yeah, hopefully it'll go well. Hopefully it's more than four or five matches, and yeah. hopefully more people show up because it did not seem. I, and I yeah, don't, the crowd wasn't into it. That was. I mean, that's like one thing. I mean, obviously, I haven't been to a ton of shows, but. Every time I've gone to like a Ring of Honor show or anything like that, the crowd is so amped for everything. And when we watch them on TV, I mean, right. you can just see the crowd being so into it. And at least on the last week's episode, it did not seem like the crowd was feeling it. I think we're also a little spoiled by the fact that we just saw All In a little over well, a month ago. Think, yeah. And I mean, that was just a phenomenal atmosphere. And one of the, I mean, it was easily the best show I've been to live. So. Yeah, it just it was a great time, and it's gonna make it very hard to top that for any shows in the near future, I believe. Yeah. So carrying on, um, let's talk about the movie A Star Is Born, starring Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga. Also named Stephanie Germanotta, just as a fun fact. That's Lady Gaga's real name. I am sure our audience was wondering that one. Well, fun fact. I'm gonna bring you a fun fact when I can find one. Fair enough. I'm a, I, fun I'm, fact, Bradley Cooper is dreamy and handsome. That is a fun fact. Also, fun fact, he that's him singing in the movie. I did not know that. Yeah, that's him singing. And another fun fact. Okay. Jason Isbell wrote the, I don't think it's the title song, because that's the one that's Shallow by Lady Gaga, but wrote one of the main songs for Bradley Cooper's character. And really, if it was a title song, it would be called A Star is Born. Oh. You mean the... Like the premiere song or yeah. the the big single, the big if you will. Si- the big single is "Shallow," which is written by Lady Gaga and some other people. But the Jason Isbell song is the one that I like the most. What's the name of it? Um. Do you know the song titles as well as you know the uh, wrestler, wrestler names? names? Yeah. Fair enough. Well, 
We'll find out. We'll post it on Twitter, possibly. Or if I'll we just remember. cut this part out. Anyways. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, why don't you give a little bit of a synopsis of the movie then, Jules? So, I had always heard of the movie A Star is Born, um, referencing the Barbra Streisand version. I did not know that there were two previous versions. Um, I think in like the 30s and or 30s or 40s, there were a couple other versions. I'd never seen A Star is Born, so I came into it um, with a very little knowledge about what the plot would be. Um, and I'm not going to do any spoilers, um, but the less you know about the plot, I think the better. <laughs> Because I had such an amazing experience with this movie. Um, I think the the music was amazing. Um, Jake and I love going to concerts. Um, we are in the first couple of years we were dating, I think we saw like 20 or 30 concerts together. I mean, so we love concerts. So um, being able to see this movie, which was kind of like a musical, but also totally not a musical vibe like there's not no one just suddenly like bursts into song or dance or anything but it almost felt like a documentary a fictionalized documentary of a like a rock star's life that's right i thought it was very well done in the fact that even though it felt like a musical and the fact there were so many songs that they put it in in a pretty natural way it yeah. didn't feel forced like something like the greatest showman or which we also loved by the way yes thanks for <laughs> Making it seem like I just love musicals to everybody. Well, okay, I should say I loved. I mean, I'll admit it, I loved it, but, you know, I wasn't going to put it out there. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I just thought that it was insanely well done. I wouldn't be surprised if there are Oscar nominations for Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga and maybe Bradley Cooper again for and maybe directing. maybe even Sam Elliott, who plays um, Bradley Cooper's brother slash manager, I think, in the movie. Right. Yeah, but I mean, especially with Lady Gaga, I mean, she's she's done some acting. I know she was on American Horror Story one season, um, but I was so impressed with her acting. I really was. I mean, everybody kind of know thinks they know Lady Gaga because, you know, she wore the meat dress or she had crazy hair. Or she arrived to an award show in a giant egg or something. Um, but I think it's a testament to her talent and her career that she's really come a far, a far away from that. She really doesn't need to have those kind of theater antics to to kind of hide who she really is like i think she she was really raw in this especially since it correlates a lot it could correlate a lot to her own life right you know it's a very different story than her life but i'm gonna steal your your gimmick here and i'm gonna throw out a fun fact um a fun fact is that we last november went and saw lady gaga and that was the last big concert that we saw prior to my surgery that's true the last concert we have seen though was at starcast seeing matthew massey Papa Buck. Killing it. Oh, yeah. Like he does. Yeah. That's actually a good transition into something that I think we'll, we'll want to talk about quite often. And we hinted on it earlier, kind of how I at least, you know, deal with quite a bit of anxiety. And, and we, you know, both have dealt with depression in the past. Is um, even just going to movies after Jake's amputation was a big deal. I mean, I know a lot of people would be like, you're just going to the movies. You don't even have to be able to walk, you know. But like getting out. After months of us just living in our house together, going to work, Jake working from home for a few months, just even going to a movie together was a big deal. And Jake mentioning us seeing Lady Gaga, and that was the last big show before his amputation and like our whole life kind of changed. Um, We've dealt with a lot of social anxiety about going back into going to concerts. We haven't been to a big one in in a long time. No, we had two, we had tickets to two different concerts. One we were gonna see Smashing Pumpkins here, and we actually both got really sick, so we had to sell them and lose a bit of money on StubHub. And in addition to that, we had tickets to see Fozzie, where we were both we were well. The problem was that uh, I just was overcome with anxiety, and even though I made arrangements with the venue and all that, I just could not bring myself to go. Yeah. It was it was a very much a bummer. I mean. Yeah. I would go to at least probably about 10 or so shows a year before this. And the fact that I've been to just two shows in the past year, it's, it's a bit of a transition. Um, Yeah. And just, just so people kind of know what, when we say like anxiety, what, what's the anxiety like, um, for someone who's had such a big life change like this, there's even the simplest of things that, that can kind of start to gnaw away at you. What's the parking situation like? Am I going to be able to park nearby? What if my limb is sore that day? What if the what if the ground isn't steady? What if the 
you know, there's um, loose rocks, those, all those types of things just to, for the basics. I mean, let alone like, what are the, what are the doors like? Is there going to be an elevator? Are the hallways going to be super small? Is the bathroom going to be accessible? You're starting to make me worry a little bit about going to SmackDown this week. (laughs) (laughs) Don't, we've got this, honey. I know. And we've been to Banker's Life enough times. Right. But those are the type of things that like most people don't associate with, you know, the idea of like going to a concert that should be so fun. And it always has been for us. And it, especially for Jake, it's always been that way. I, you know, have a little bit more of the experience of having the anxiety of what are the seats going to be like? Where, you know, what if we get lost? What if there's no cell reception? Um, and that's just that's just a little peek into the life of someone with chronic anxiety. Right. What if there's an armed shooter? You know? Oh my gosh. I mean, that that's that's a, on a level, you know, that most people could absolutely understand. Um, but the, the smaller things, I think, are the things that... Or there's people me. like me who just choose to try and be ignorant to that, figuring I just want to have a good time and yeah. don't want to just live my life in fear. Right. But, but alas, this podcast is not about the perils of social anxiety. <laughs> right. That's not a social anxiety podcast. No, it's not. Um, but I hope you guys have really enjoyed listening, and I hope we gave a good enough kind of rounded picture about what this podcast could be. I hope so. I mean... It's our first podcast, so hopefully people will just grade us on a curve a little bit. I know, bit. I hope so, a little bit. Or give us some ideas about things um, that that would be interesting for you to hear us talk about. Right, or definitely send us some you know, constructive criticism, if you yeah. will. Nothing mean, but just, Nothing you know, mean. like, hey, this this is something you could work on. Yeah. You should, if you would should feel like you want to get in touch with us, Jake, what's your handle on Twitter? It is at that Jake Sinisak. And how do you spell Sinisak? S E N E S A C. That's right. And you can find me. I'm at Julisi. That's J E W L E E S I. It's like Khaleesi, you know, from oh, yeah. Game from of Thrones, right? Game of Thrones, that's right. Everybody knows that, right? I don't think everybody knows it, but it, a lot of people do. Okay. Oh, I hope I picked a good name. I think you picked a. I mean, I kind of gave it to you, so I'd that's say. That's true, you did. I'd say you got a wonderful Twitter yeah. handle. And you can also find us. Um, and for more information about us in general on my website where I blog about the new amputee lifestyle that we have um, and that you can find at www.juliesinisak.com slash blog and also in case you didn't come across the podcast via twitter you can find the podcast at t-y-l-o underscore pod that's right and we will make that account have lots of good information about us at least we'll try. It'll have information about us. I don't know <laughs> it if it'll be It might not be good or relevant or useful. Right. I don't want people to hold us to that expectation. It's got to be good. No, that's right. Ooh. I know. Hopefully this wasn't wasn't horrible. Hopefully we have another podcast. Hopefully this is Hopefully not the someone, first and last. Honey, you know what? Hopefully what? someone listened to this. Hopefully. Hopefully they'll listen again. Hopefully they will listen again. But. Anyway. So, and we don't have a clever sign-on, so or sign off so hopefully we can have that by episode two yeah but anyways hope you all have a great day and until next time until next time take care